These are 10 things you didn't know about Hikaru Nakamura. From being a kick-ass poker player to playing chess before he can even walk, Hikaru Nakamura has made a name of himself in the chess world and the online chess community with a current ELO rating of 2,780, winning the US Championship 5 times, being the current FIDE World Fisher Random Chess Champion, and representing USA at 5 chess Olympiads, securing a team gold medal and 2 team bronze medals. He was only 10 years old when he defeated an international master in a USCF rated game, being the youngest to do so at the time. Speaking of youngest, let's start. Hikaru became the youngest American Grandmaster in 2003. At the age of 15 years and 79 days, Hikaru has already proved himself to be the next top chess player and set the expectations for his chess potential. He was already a chess prodigy and this proved it even more. Being only 15 years of age, Hikaru broke Bobby Fischer's long-standing record by becoming the youngest American Grandmaster in history, with the difference being only 3 months. This was an incredible achievement at such a young age. Of course, we are talking about American Grandmasters and not the all-time record that is currently held by Abimanyu Mishra, becoming a Grandmaster aged 12 years, 4 months and 25 days. Being the youngest American Grandmaster is truly amazing considering Hikaru Nakamura did not even finish school and was mainly homeschooled. Hikaru showed incredible skills in chess at a very, very young age. And being raised by parents that also are chess lovers, they quickly grabbed the opportunity to grow Hikaru's skills even more by training every day and having him compete in tournaments all across the country. At 9 years old, after the 4th grade, Hikaru was pulled from school and dropped into the chess world. Hikaru said, If I stayed in regular school, I would not have been able to get the excused absences to compete in enough events to progress my career. Tournaments usually include many rounds of games, and in order for Hikaru to participate in as many tournaments as possible to improve his skills, there is only so many days you can call in sick for school. The principal will eventually catch on and stop it. So Hikaru's parents made the right choice to pull him out and let him focus on what he excels at the most. We can see how this was a smart move, considering Hikaru went on to become one of the best chess players in the world, currently ranked at number 3 according to Pide's rankings list. Not only did Hikaru leave school, he actually never worked any job in his life besides being a chess player. He never flipped burgers at McDonald's, never felt miserable in a dead-end 95 job, never even got yelled at by a boss. All he knows is chess. Being such an incredible chess player, it's useless to try to waste your time doing something else that you know might not build you a good future. Hikaru realized his love for chess and his skills early on and stuck with it throughout his life. And when you're winning games and tournaments across the country, the money definitely comes with it and a job is not needed anymore. But it's not just regular money, it is great money. According to multiple financial reports, Hikaru Nakamura is the richest player ever with a net worth of $50 million, right next to Magnus Carlsen and above Fabiano Caruana worth $13 million and Gary Kasparov worth $6 million. Yeah. I guess it's safe to say that the no job and no school thing worked quite well for Hikaru. Whoever tells you that chess does not pay the bills, they are definitely lying, considering you can compete at the highest levels and win tournaments to make your bag. Hikaru Nakamura made most of his money actively playing chess and winning tournaments. Money in chess is growing every year as the game becomes more and more popular and big companies see the value in dropping money for sponsorships in the game, so prize money increases. Other than chess winnings, his main income comes from streaming and content creation on YouTube. He is one of the biggest chess creators with over 2 million subscribers and more than 600 million views. Recently, he has been signed by the powerful Misfits Gaming Group, a video game and electronic sports company guaranteeing him an additional income for his streaming platforms and on March 29, 2023, Kick, the streaming platform, signed Hikaru Nakamura to a non-exclusive deal. Additionally, he generates substantial income from energy drink endorsements, sponsorships and media appearances among other things. He also wrote a famous book called Bullet Chess, One Minute to Mate. Not to mention that he is also earning a decent salary from the USA because he is representing them in all international and team tournaments. It has been said that the American chess superstar invests much of his earnings in stocks, further increasing his net worth. Going outside of chess for a moment, Hikaru Nakamura has publicly spoken about his love for playing poker and even streamed himself playing quite a few times. He mainly played the game Choker, which is a mix of chess and poker. I mean, when you have someone that dedicated his life to chess, you just can't take the chess out of him. Choker, chess boxing, what else can be incorporated within a chess game? A football match? Chess is really a universal game. But it's not enough for Hikaru Nakamura to have the highest title in chess next to his name. I'm talking about the Grandmaster title. Hikaru is on the list of players people call Super Grandmasters. As if Grandmaster alone is not enough, Super Grandmaster is a god-level chess tier that only a select few actually have. People like Magnus Carlsen, Ding Liren, Sergei Karyakin and Gary Kasparov are on the top of that list. And of course, Hikaru Nakamura. Even though the Super Grandmaster title isn't an official FIDE title, 
The Super Grand Master is an unofficial title the chess community uses to classify players with a FID rating above 2700. Another title Nakamura was awarded is the title of Grand Master of the Year. Damn, Hikaru really made waves in the chess world securing all the titles. Too bad he never won a world title though. In late 2011, Nakamura was awarded the title of Grand Master of the Year. The award is given annually by the Association of Chess Professionals and is decided by votes from all the top players. Grand Master of the Year, Super Grand Master, Genius Chess Player and Social Media Star, Hikaru Nakamura is on another level. I mean, he even once beat Mr. Beast, the largest YouTuber in the world, using only a king and a queen. Imagine having your full pieces in front of you, with countless possibilities for checkmates to defeat your opponent, who has nothing to defend with except his queen, and still losing. Oh no, no, Oh my no. gosh, are you kidding me? Oh, no. <laughs> I quit. I'm not even playing anymore. I don't, I don't like chess. I retire. Is Mr. Beast that bad at chess, or is Hikaru Nakamura just so good? I mean, I don't want to brag, but I feel very confident about beating Hikaru Nakamura if he only had a queen on his side. On a live stream, Mr. Beast challenged Hikaru Nakamura to a chess game. To make things fair, Hikaru was only allowed a queen on his side of the board. Mr. Beast looked like he was struggling throughout the whole game. He had many chances to win, but of course, couldn't see any of them. But as the game progresses, Mr. Beast's position kept on becoming worse and worse until he finally captured Hikaru's queen. This surely was the best moment for Mr. Beast. He now has a 25 points of material advantage over Hikaru, who only has a king playing on his side. A checkmate is literally the easiest thing to do now. But not for Mr. Beast. After a couple of moves, Mr. Beast ended up actually stalemating and drawing the game. Imagine stalemating with so many opportunities for a win. Even though Hikaru did not actually win the game, drawing with only a queen against a full set is a win in my books. But I kinda understand Mr. Beast here. He is playing against Hikaru, the youngest ever US champion. This is definitely not an easy game. In 2005, Nakamura became the youngest ever United States national chess champion, beating Alex Trepunsky and bagging $25,000 in prize money. With that, Hikaru became the youngest winner of the 159-year-old title since Bobby Fischer. I mean, it's no surprise considering Hikaru was raised in a family of chess players. Nakamura's parents were both professional chess players. His father, Shigeru, is a nine-time Japanese chess champion, while his mother, Kiyoshi, is a two-time winner of the Women's Japanese Chess Championship. Being raised in a family of winners, especially in chess, will surely reflect on the sun, and in the case of Hikaru Nakamura, he definitely took it home. And finally, we have the longest game ever played by Hikaru, going on for over 8 hours. I sometimes play a 3 minute blitz game on chess.com just so I can pass the time, because I can't stand playing for longer. Imagine what Hikaru must have felt like playing one game for 8 hours. In an interview, Hikaru talked about the game he played in a tournament in Germany. He did not mention who it was against though, but he mentioned how mentally challenging and hard it is to play for so long, focusing on just one game and one position. If your opponent goes into a deep think, say 20 to 30 minutes, you can get up and walk around to get some water or use the restroom. So fortunately, that doesn't happen. But still, mentally it's very tiring when you play a game that long, he said. You can imagine after playing for 8 hours, somebody has to get the W. But in this case, nobody did and the game ended in a draw. Now let me know down in the comments if you knew those things about Hikaru. And don't forget to subscribe.